Joining us now live here on Space Station Live is uh, an old friend of ours. Here is Pam Melroy, who is a former astronaut. She now has uh, moved on to uh, possibly bigger and better things. We'll talk to her about that. But, Pam, how, how have you been? Uh, hey, Josh. It's great to hear your voice and uh, be talking to my friends at NASA. So, first of all, let's update people on uh, what you've been up to since you uh, left NASA. Well, I left NASA in 2009 and spent uh, a couple years in industry at Lockheed Martin and uh, moved up to the Washington, D.C. area and got some experience with the commercial space side at the FAA. And now I'm overseeing research and development in space and aviation at uh, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. So do you, uh, do you miss being here in Houston and hanging around uh, the, uh, the Johnson Space Center? I sure do. I miss JSC, I miss Houston, and most of all, I miss the people that I used to work with every day. Well, it's, it's, it's good to hear from you. We've been talking about uh, the anniversaries of Valentina Tereshkova and Sally Ride uh, all this week on Space Station Live. We've had quite a bit of interviews. We just talked to uh, uh, your former colleague, uh, Peggy Whitson, just a few minutes ago. But, you know, talk about what those two flights in particular, and, and even the one that you flew with Peggy. We're looking at the picture right now on screen of... Uh, the, uh, the Hatchway handshake that you guys did back on STS-120. But talk about what those anniversaries mean and, and, and to you personally and, and just to human spaceflight in general. Well, I think the, the first feeling I have is how important it is to honor and recognize trailblazers and acknowledge the fact that uh, they had uh, difficulties and resistance that's really hard to imagine uh, for someone in my case who came uh, so many years after both uh, Tereshkova and, and Sally Ride. And and so to, to take a moment to honor them and remember that, you know, what they did was in incredibly hard, uh, especially at the time that they did it. It's also an opportunity to sort of reflect on the change in times. And Peggy's um, and my flight together, two women uh, commanders flying in space at the same time, was really a reflection of how much things had changed that two women could uh, completely by coincidence be uh, commanding at the same time. And so the, it's a great reflection on, on how far we've come and how many women have, have flown in space. And, and it's also an opportunity to be excited and think about the future and men and women going to Mars together. Booster ignition and We're taking a look at uh, your flight on STS-120. You know, your background is in science, just like Peggy's. You've got a Bachelor of Arts degree in Physics and Astronomy, and you've got a Master of Science degree in Earth and Planetary Sciences. You've also got the military background, but, but talk about women in science and, and what got you interested in, in the areas that you wanted to focus on? Well, to be honest, it was NASA. Uh, watching uh, the Apollo program and watching uh, people step out on the surface of the moon was very pivotal for me at, at a, a key age uh, to, to see that and to say, I want to explore the universe. I already had a fascination with astronomy but the idea of actually visiting uh, space and going uh, potentially out to another planet was so thrilling to me that it just uh, locked me into the goal of studying physics and astronomy and earth science and planetary science. So there's no question that was, uh, that was my inspiration. So this is probably an obvious question, but whenever you flew your first flight, uh, you'd done all this studying in Earth and planetary sciences, but it did, did it really sort of change your view on that once you finally got up into space and could look down at the planet below? Well, it's funny. One of the things before I flew in space, uh, you know, it, when you're a, a new astronaut and waiting for your flight assignment, you still go out and you talk about the space program and you do PRs and, and so forth. And people used to ask me what my favorite planet was, and I would talk about Neptune because my master's um, – thesis was on the atmosphere of Nep Neptune and whether it was turbulent or layered and, and so forth. And so um, being knowledgeable about it and interested in it, I always used to say my favorite planet is Neptune. And uh, of course, when I went into space the first time and looked down at Earth, it was sort of one of those forehead slap moments where you're like, you idiot, your favorite planet is Earth. <laughs> um, I just had never put it into that context before, and I realized Earth is my favorite planet. I don't want to live anywhere else. Yeah, it's uh, it's always good to hear the astronauts talk about you know how their how their views have changed once they get up there. It's, it's interesting. Sometimes you got to leave the planet to to really 
you know, appreciate it in a different light once you get out there. Absolutely. So whenever you talked to, you talked about how you used to go give speeches to, to students and kids and things like that. I'm sure you still do some of that. What, what do you tell them in terms of the ones that are interested in science? Like, how do they figure out what they want to go do? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of evidence to show that uh, boys and girls are interested in different aspects of things. And so I, I try to bring all those things together. Uh, you know, boys, I think, uh, get really motivated and excited about, um, you know, cool technology for its own sake. They love rocket engines and uh, aircraft and, and so forth. Um, girls tend to be more focused on – they get engaged and hooked when they think about um, – uh, science and solving problems and engineering that solves world problems. And so uh, the great thing about space is that it has everything. It's, uh, you know, you're going to fire off a giant rocket and you're going to go explore space and understand uh, the nature of the universe and the human body and our own planet. And those are, are very real and engaging problems. So I, I think um, it's, you know, space is just sort of uniquely positioned to inspire both boys and girls. But I, I, I basically tell them, uh, because I do meet a lot of kids who are interested in science, and, and I often ask them, do you, you know, is there something you like in particular? Do you want to be an engineer? Do you like space? Do you want, um, do, you, do you like biology or chemistry? And uh, what I've found is uh, the best way for kids to think about that is actually get exposed to real-life situations, like you right there in Mission Control, and the opportunity to to kind of seek out those real life situations and find out which one really resonates and catches you and and so that's i think the best way to figure out what kind of science you actually want to do in the future is to go out and talk to real scientists well, last question for you pam you took up a, a really important part of the international space station that was the uh, harmony uh, node, which sort of started this huge expansion of the space station back on ICS-120, because the Kibo came after that, and uh, the Columbus Laboratory, and, and a lot of other pieces. But and you, you were on board for quite some time. Uh, you probably saw some of the science that the crew was doing up there. Talk about, uh, you know, what was your sort of your favorite experiment, or, or what does the space station mean overall in terms of science and research, and why is it important? Well, I think the uh, the most uh, enduring uh, science that's been done from the very first day in which I participated in is the science on the human body. And I think uh, studying how the human body reacts in a microgravity environment gives us key insights to aspects of living here on Earth. And one of my favorite medical experiments is the, um, the renal stone study uh, because the human body is uh, functionally dehydrated in space. And you would think that people would have all kinds of problems with kidney stones and gallstones and things like that. But statistically, it's much less than you have here on Earth. And that is such a serious problem. I mean, it puts so many people in so much pain and uh, changes their lives and can even kill them. And so I think that un really understanding um, how the body works is such a central piece of, of what is done on the space station. But I think uh, the other exciting piece about it is studying the Earth from space and understanding our planet better. And the final piece of that is testing technologies that will allow us to go outside low Earth orbit and visit other planets and help us understand our Earth even better. So it's sort of a pretty broad portfolio from very immediate human to uh, our understanding of the universe. Well, Pam, we thank you for your time. It's, uh, it's always good to hear from you. We, we miss you around here. We hope that uh, someday you'll come back and, and say hi and come visit us. Thank you, Josh. I sure will. Have a good day. Thanks again, Pam. You too. Bye-bye.